Okay, so you got a sliding door and a cat or a dog and you're kind of tired of doing this. I've got, I've got a DIY uh, treat that can save you a couple hundred bucks from buying a fancy one. Today, we're gonna make one that's a little sturdier using a cat door that you can buy on Amazon for like 20 something bucks, links in the description, and a large board. You will need a screwdriver, a jigsaw, that's kind of a pain in the ass. You can get the board cut at Home Depot if you don't have your own, you know, that saw. Um, and then if you want to paint it, you need a couple supplies. It's relatively easy to do, and uh, I like these things. I will tell you this, I make a lot of mistakes along the way that you can learn from. But this is 11 inches. Pro tip, don't accidentally get a nine inch one. Um, it doesn't matter how high, it's gonna end up being the height of your door, which in my case was 77 inches. And then this depth is important, one and a half inches. Go up first, then down. Nice. Now here's a little bonus if, you, if you're ambitious. You see how that pops out a little bit? We don't want the board to rest there. We want it to go all the way on the inset. It's not gonna be visible. The little sod area, it's ugly, but it slides right over. And then this side we don't have to worry because when you close it, that latch will close anyway. There's still some cracks. We'll solve for that with some insulation. All right, so it's time to cut with the jigsaw the hole that we're gonna put this through. Um, I do not recommend you use your kitchen as a work area. I'm gonna make sure I'm high enough that the door isn't bumping into the bottom. And you could just trace this on there for a pattern. Then we're gonna cut around it because this has to go completely inside. So if it's too close, it won't go through. So we're gonna use the jigsaw to cut around this thing, but in order to get that through, right, we're gonna drill holes in each corner that are bigger than the jigsaw. Looks like the blade's on backwards. A new blade. All right, we're going for a fresh new blade, wood ones. I don't know how to use a jigsaw. Third time's a charmer, right? All right. And it doesn't fit on either direction because I didn't listen to my own advice. So be sure to trace it much bigger than you think. And now it fits. Flip it over, see my handiwork, but boom, it's gonna be covered. Oh man, mom and dad are gonna be so pissed. So now's the easy part, that was hell. Yeah, not the right screw head. What we wanna do there is make sure that we're using the wrong screw head so that we just shred each screw and can't remove it. I just wanted you to feel like this is an accessible project and that if I can do it, you can do it better. Live. <laughs> and I got some uh, rubber foam that I'll put on the side of there once I paint so that those cracks are not there. It's a vinyl floor, so I'll just sweep it up. I wasn't really worried about painting it, but Charlie said it would look a lot better and he's right. So luckily I had some, oh look at that, it's printed upside down, plastic wood, which you can uh, fill in gaps and uh, blemishes in the wood. I obviously didn't read the instructions on this and here and squish it in, yeah. Stuff is probably really old, and I'm not sure how that's gonna sand down, but I got rid of some of the knots. This is kind of satisfying. It's definitely not a good idea to try to reheat pizza while you're doing this. This is where I sand it down without waiting sufficient time for it to dry. All right, now it's important to get the sawdust off it's a mop in action going too. Okay, another pro tip here is I'm using white interior paint, even though it's an outdoor uh, thing. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's all I have. Uh, one of my painting techniques is just to not give a crap and do it fast. Okay, just drop in a little insulation.
ain't that a beaut. You can do it too. Show me. Oh, look at that. You brought me a treat. And that's the terrifying thing about a cat that can go outside. Oh, jeez, I'm, oh my God. 